Hey everyone, you're listening to the Simple Electronics Podcast. I'm your host, Dan, from the Simple Electronics YouTube channel. This episode is brought to you by PCBWay. Uh, more about that a little bit later on, because this is the 100th Simple Electronics Podcast. That's right. I did a hundred of these, you know, as of the end of this recording, which is absolutely nuts. You know, from 2020 to 2024, uh, I'm still doing these. Absolutely crazy. So, um, yeah, I just want to thank you all. And um, there's going to be a couple of personal updates towards the end. But right now, I just want to say thanks to everyone who has been listening. You know, there's uh, dozens of you, uh, actually uh, several dozens. Um, usually the episodes get... Um, around a thousand views depending on the guest it can be way more but usually around a thousand views between the audio version and the uh, YouTube version so I want to thank you all so if you're listening to this right now the, the thank you goes to you yeah uh, another thing before we get started too is that uh, Maddie the digital mermaid who was on the podcast a little while ago um, she needs help her father uh, needs to come back to Canada, is kind of trapped with uh, medical bills somewhere in South America, if I'm not mistaken. If you are the type that really, you know, likes her, likes her content, and you have the means to help, uh, I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, if you want to help a member of the community, this is a great way to do it. So, yeah. So let's uh, take a little bit of a stroll back in memory lane when the podcast started. So I have here September 2020th was the first episode to come out. It was an hour and 20 minutes and it was with Junk from Work. Um, junk from Work and I are discussing things um, because I would like to start a second podcast Um which will be hilarious when you hear about uh, what's been going on here lately, but that's for later. Um, but yeah, we we are in the we are in discussions for things. Uh, he and I still talk. He doesn't really do YouTube anymore. But uh, fun fact: the first episode was only an hour and twenty minutes, uh, as opposed to the subsequent episodes, which you know stretched some of them uh, up to, you know, almost three hours because uh, Junk From Work was affected by a thunderstorm and he actually uh, cut power. So how it, I used to do it back in the day is I used to do a voice call. I feel like over Discord, not 100% sure if it was via Discord or something else. And then, you know, I would record my audio on audacity and the guest would record their audio over audacity and then they would email me the audio or google drive or whatever and then i'd combine them in post and that way i had local recordings you know high quality recordings of everyone's audio and so i could uh you know easily combine them with you know good quality well um he, he got hit by lightning, so it shut down his PC, and therefore we lost his recording, but I had my recording, and that's what we went with. So that's the pilot episode, Junk From Work. Next episode was with uh, another maker. I would consider him a good friend of mine at this point, um, but more so, uh, it was really cool to have a chat with him back then, learned a lot of things from him. And he actually, he's in one of those industries where if he wanted to work 24 hours a day, he could probably work 24 hours a day. And so taking time to chat with me was literally taking income away from him. Because, I mean, it is work. I mean, maybe it's not the same as work, but it is work to chat with me. And he graciously volunteered his time in order to um, make the podcast happen. So that's two. Episode three is with Pile of Stuff. Again, um, I think I consider him a friend at this point. Um, and I, I, 
I don't know how he considers me, but probably a friend as well. And uh, he was working long hours and he was doing uh, overtime at his work. And he also took the time, you know, an unproven sort of thing, right? This podcast was completely just uh, an idea of mine. And there was no way to guarantee, you know, it it was all one-sided. It was all benefiting me and not him, especially at the time, I believe Pile of Stuff had more subscribers than me, which he deserves now anyways. Um, But yeah, he took his time and he did an episode with me. And then number four, number four is a very important episode because I got Dave Bodner on. And Dave Bodner is just a random YouTuber that that I was watching at the time. He was doing, you know, component level electronics. He was making circuits and stuff like that. In fact, if uh, you have not listened to the old episodes of the Simple Electronics podcast, you should go back and uh, listen to either the Dave uh, Bodner um episode or just go to go there to get the links to his YouTube channel. He has a phenomenal YouTube channel and I'm sad to say I don't think he's posted in quite a while. No, his last video was two years ago and the last video before that was three years ago. So uh, pretty sad that uh, Dave either doesn't have time or um, you know, doesn't feel like doing YouTube videos anymore because uh, his channel was amazing. And so I, when I reached out to him, I thought it was going to be a no, right? Because I had only released a couple episodes by then. It wasn't very well viewed. It wasn't very well known. I mean, I'm a nobody myself. And in fact, I think Dave Bodner had more subscribers than me at the time as well. Um, But he was very gracious and he agreed to do the podcast. So, you know, we did a a Skype call and he was a very nice, very nice guy. And uh, we had a very nice chat. So that was that was pretty good. So those are the first four episodes of the Simple Electronics podcast. Oh, and I have to say, too, going back to Pile of Stuff, um, I tell all of my guests that the their appearance on the Simple Electronics podcast is not for me. It's for my audience. And it, well, it is for me, but but not in the sense that you're thinking of. I tell them that I I am ne- I would never ask them to advertise their um, appearance on the podcast. It's not about self promotion. It's really about uh, actually those of you who know the origin, uh, I'll say it again. It's because I selfishly want uh, to be able to, you know, have an excuse to have a seat with these really intelligent people that I look up to really creative people and, uh, and have a chat with them. It's a, it's a nice, it's a nice way to, to do that. And then I get to publish it. Um, however, most of the guests took it upon themselves to advertise their presence on the podcast to their uh, members. And I believe the number one uh, subscribership I've ever received in a, uh, in a single day was when Pile of Stuff uh, recommended my channel from the uh, podcast appearance. So he sent people to my channel. Oh, no, actually, it wasn't from the podcast appearance. I had... I had uh, mailed him a PCB. But yeah, I think I got like 78 subscribers that day. And I think that's the the most single subscribers in a day. I'm, I, I don't know if that's, if I can verify that anymore, but I'm pretty sure that that was it. So yeah, that, I mean, the podcast just grew from there. So after that, it was uh, Dad's RC Workbench, um, basically known as the RC Tinkerer as well. Um, Tim from Don't Give Up. Then Gadget Reboot. Again, I would call Gadget Reboot a friend. Billy Rubin came on. Um, Very special because it was uh, very much a crossover. Uh, The first 
a sort of a, a real to real, you know, artist to come on to the podcast. Uh, Billy has a an amazing artistic view, and um, she was willing to come on, which was very nice. Um, episode nine, another maker interviewed me uh, instead of the other way around. And then episode 10, Unexpected Maker. Again, another um, YouTuber that I had really looked up to. And, you know, he's out there in sort of uh, like business land, just, you know, making his own PCBs, like really like running a commercial electronics business. And uh, and he came on and actually he sent me uh, PCBs to, to play with, which was really, really nice of him to do. And then I've got, uh, make it in fake it, um, which is, uh, was another YouTuber. I don't think she does YouTube anymore. Sadly. Um, Brian Locke, uh, he came on as well. And then Andrea Raketa. Andrea Raketa was, uh, I don't remember who got me Andrea Raketa feel like it may have been another maker it this was uh you know three years ago now at this point but andrea riquetta if you guys didn't hear that episode he actually works for arduino like in italy works for arduino and so having a a conversation with him was another like oh my god like what am i doing type moment like i was able to get um Someone from Arduino. Now, he, I don't, he didn't really come on as like an official um, Arduino. I don't think it was an Arduino sanctioned um, interview, but it was really interesting uh, to be able to chat with him about sort of like the inner workings of, uh, of, of Arduino. So, you know, that was really awesome. I mean, I guess I, I'm not going to go through all of the guests. I'm just trying to give highlights but but honestly uh there are a lot of freaking highlights i mean the whole podcast is kind of highlights aside from my my solo episodes um even like brian Locke before andrea riquetta i mean to get a professional coder to come in um it's insane like I, i still i still can't believe uh, all the stuff that that happened since um even if we jumped forward um big clive agreed to come on that was a big one i should actually pull up my stats so that uh we can see the 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 views on these episodes um well, let's see I'm doing this live folks i have a unplanned i have an unplanned trip to toronto tomorrow so i need to i need to get this done uh, kind of like ASAP. So <laughs> no time, no time to prepare. Uh, incorrect username. How about this one? No. Well, maybe I won't be able to give you guys a, a, a preview of the, of the episode, the, the view counts, but I guess it doesn't really matter because honestly, they're, they're all really good episodes. If I search my channel, Sort by views. Holy crap. Okay. Any guesses as to which episode has the most views? Um, that would be number 53, Electro Boom. So this is just YouTube because I can't log into my Spotify uh, interface. Oh, never mind. Turns out I was just able to log into my interface. Okay. Well, anyways, um, Electro Boom then. So I believe Electroboom came through. I don't want to get this wrong because that was a really big uh, that was a really big guest for me. I'm pretty sure it was Scott the Deaf Palm who put me in contact with Electroboom. I'm I can't be a hundred percent sure because it's been a long time and I don't want to. I don't want to feel, uh, you know, I don't want to get it wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was Scott, the Def Palm, who got me in contact with Electroboom. 
Um, I could not believe um, that someone with a channel the size of Electro Booms, okay, he's huge, huge channel. Um, he was very gracious, very nice, took the time, treated me as an equal. Um, really nice guys. I, actually, I would say there's not a single person. You can go take a look on my entire uh, catalog. Not a single person I didn't get along with. Everyone was super kind. I guess we all share the same trauma, right, of being uh, YouTubers or creators or whatever. But um, yeah, Electro Boom, that was a huge one. So very, you know, many thanks to 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 Medi and uh, Scott who made it happen. But yeah, Electro Boom, that was a huge one. And I tried to, for that episode, well, first of all, for a lot of these episodes, I was very nervous. I try not to let the guest know that, uh, that I'm, that I'm nervous, but I'm always nervous. Let's, let's just be honest. I, I am, I'm like, a, a a tank of anxiety <laughs> in most, at most times. Um, so when I have a guest on, I'm always nervous. But I never tell the guests that. And uh, that, I think, comes from my skills in uh, teaching, right? When you're teaching a class, you know, the, the thing I know well is the stuff I'm teaching. Like the subject matter, I know very well. But every time I get a new group, I always feel nervous, and I think that's a healthy thing because that, that just, I think that means that I care about doing a good job, right? And then as soon as I start the class, all the nerves go away. But, but the deal is, if you ever find yourself in one of these situations, if you don't tell anyone that you're nervous and you just go up and do your thing, most people won't know. Most people just won't realize that you're nervous. It just won't come across. And so I would say, um, if you're ever nervous, that's okay. You know, absorb it, be part of it. But don't let anyone know because probably nobody will notice. And that's what I tried to do for all my, my podcast guests. So I, I am nervous. Um, I'll talk about what I did on one of them. Oh, my God. But, yeah, I try not to let it show. And so far, I think it's been working. So second most viewed episode only from YouTube, though. I know the audio versions, they get very different um, uh, listen rates. Uh, but second most is the pilot, Junk From Work. Then third most is Scott the Deaf Palm, uh, his second round on. I'm not sure why that one did really well. Um, 1772 views on YouTube, which is, I mean, if you guys think about it, it's not a lot compared to something like, uh, you know, what Joe Rogan gets, but we're electronics enthusiasts here. So we gotta, we gotta be a little bit more realistic. Um, so yeah, very good conversations, uh, with Scott. Um, one day I'd love to travel to New Zealand and, uh, maybe he can, show me around i'll have to stop in australia either before or after uh so that one circuit can show me around as well because when you're in that 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 end of the world you know you might as well but yeah so um what what actually did i talk to scott about on that episode let's see i usually put it in the description you guys will probably know this better than me um oh scott's beginner series i believe he did, I believe he did do that. Well, good for him. If you haven't seen it, now's the time to go take a look at it. Uh, the Deaf Palm on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description. Fourth most viewed video, uh, video version of the podcast. Actually, Scott will be pretty happy that he got the third most viewed because number four is a big in as well. Dave Jones. Um, Dave is an absolute 
monster in the electronic space. Um, basically, if I'm not mistaken, the the subscribership and you know monthly views ranking goes Electro Boom first because his videos have very wide reach, like very entertaining, um, very like uh, uh, good for the lay person and good for everyone all the way up to the enthusiast and professional. So a very wide sort of swath of people enjoy Electro Boom stuff. Uh, plus he's very uh, clickbaity and very gifable, has a huge personality. But Dave Jones, um, he he runs quite wide too, but a lot less to the average Joe. I think he skews way more, uh, you know, starting at hobbyist all the way up to professional and sort of, um, sort of, you know, w with more emphasis on the professionals. He's uh, he's truly a working engineers YouTuber. He, he is phenomenal. And what he does, pretty much as big as you can get doing pure electronics, uh, I, I think. Again, fantastically kind guy. Took his took the time out, out of his uh, busy schedule. What was really funny talking about talking to him though was that his uh, his work days are very similar to my work days when I do YouTube. So when I have a day, let's say I, uh, I'll put Tuesday aside for YouTubing. What I'll do is I'll come down into my workshop just because I like to breathe the atmosphere. Um, and then I'll sit down, have my coffee. I'll see what's new on YouTube, watch a couple of YouTube videos. And then eventually, you know, convince myself to do work and get working. What Dave does is he'll go to work. And then he'll, he'll hang out and watch YouTube. And then eventually he's like, oh, well, maybe I should record a video. And then he puts the thing in front of him and he hits play. He hits record and he just does it. So I need to prepare. He doesn't prepare, right? Because he's, he's a professional. He already knows the subject matter. Sort of like when I do my teaching job. But it's pretty cool that he just you know, says, ah, fine. Maybe I should do some work. And he <laughs> makes a video. And the guy makes... I think he makes nearly a video a day, right between all of his all of his channels. So pretty ridiculous. And he's been wildly successful. He sells merch. I mean, he has um, multimeters that he had designed to his specifications. He had the microcurrent. I don't know if that's still available, but yeah, larger than life. And the crazy thing about Dave Jones too is in the pre-show and the post-show, if you're wondering how Dave Jones is outside of YouTube, you know, I already said uh, Mehdi is a very kind person. Uh, Dave Jones is, I, well, I would say he's a very kind person too, but he's exactly like he is on camera. He is 100%. Like, you can tell Mehdi fakes a lot of stuff on his YouTube. YouTube channel. He uh, he plays dumb, you know, in order to get the point across or to be entertaining or whatever, whatever. Dave Jones is exactly Dave Jones before he presses record, while the record button is pressed, and after he's done recording. He It is the same guy. And I don't have a lot of shop to talk, right, compared to Dave. Dave being, you know, this professional, this expert with all this experience. But we talked shop before and after. He is uh, very gracious with his time. And yeah, I believe I got Dave on through Scott the Deaf Palm as well. Don't, again, I'm really sorry if I got it wrong, but I'm, this is just what I'm remembering here. And, you know, since the pandemic life you know stuff has gone very fast so i apologize if i get that wrong let me know in the comments below if i got it wrong i hope i didn't uh next most viewed is episode two with another maker um well deserved we already chatted about him and then next most viewed is teaching tech again uh the, he was um 
a, a YouTuber, or he is a YouTuber, that I just reach out to because I watched a lot of his videos. And typically, I don't go so much for the pure 3D printing channels, but um, I felt like his channel was much more than that, especially because he does tutorial type things um, and gets into CAD and all sorts of things like that. So, And obviously, close to my heart, he is a gearhead. He loves cars. He uh, has his second channel, uh, which is TTR, Teaching Tech Racing, I think, and where he bought a race car and he's modifying and getting ready to go racing and all sorts of stuff like that. Really cool. Um, but like most YouTubers, he was he was busy as heck. So I emailed him and it took like a month or two for him to get back to me. And again, uh, I'm very grateful that he did. Fantastic guy. Um, and we, oh yeah, we're also simpatico in another way too. He, uh, was, I don't remember if he still is or just was a teacher. I believe he, t he taught, you know, younger kids than I did. I teach college. I think he might've teach, uh, taught high school. If I'm recalling correctly, again, all off the top of my head. Um, but I, I don't, I think he's a full-time YouTuber now, so he's not a teacher anymore. I'll tell you, I know some high school teachers that teach right now. In fact, I went a few times to uh, to help my friend, uh, you know, to do some teaching. Well, I say help. I mean, I got paid for it, so it's not not really help. But I would have done it for free, especially the, the second time uh, he asked me. Um, and... High school teachers are nuts. It's absolutely insane. The demands on your on your will, you know, on your mental strength, on your mental health, um, your literal energy, your attention. It's insane. Um, you know, big clap to all the teachers that teach high school and lower grades. Uh, we wouldn't be here without you. And I 100% know it's not for me. So, you know, big ups to you. G good thing you guys do what you do because I couldn't. Um, next big episode, Big Clive, episode 22. This is the physical embodiment of me being nervous. So you can tell episode 22, it was quite early in the podcast. And for me to have Big Clive on was quite big, uh, you know, Big Clive. Uh, again, if you want to know a little bit about Big Clive before and after, uh, he is exactly what you see on his live streams. He's a very nice guy, extremely nice um, and very knowledgeable. He can just recall random things out of his butt. Uh, he, he is so knowledgeable fountain of knowledge and again him too it feels like he's doing exactly what he wants to do with nothing that he has you know he doesn't have any sponsors or anything like that he just does his thing and then when it's time to go to work you know he'll go he'll book a show he'll do electricity at a show pretty crazy but uh, yeah, early in the podcast, episode 22, was very nervous, as, as I tend to be with guests, all guests. And I said he had a crazy accent in his intro. That was my biggest regret. I'm like, why did I say that? And it, it's kind of set uh, a weird tone for the start of the podcast. And of course, Clive being the professional, commensurate professional that he is, it just, he just kind of let it roll off his back. I wish I wouldn't have said that. Um, but it is what it is. You can't take back history. So for better or for worse, that's the Big Clive episode. Very happy to have him on. Again, very gracious. He, he can spend six hours streaming, you know, instead of talking to me. So really happy that he took some time. So yeah, pile of stuff. Episode three is the next one. And then Unexpected Maker. And then uh, one with my wife. So my wife's been on, I believe, 
two podcast. So this is episode forty-two. So this is a this is an interesting fact that that she's her episode is up there because I don't think we have a lot of overlap. No, I'm looking at the curve now, the view curve, and her fans are not really overlapping with mine. So she wouldn't have driven views. So I'm not 100% sure where those views came from, maybe just organically. Um, but there we go. Uh, she, uh, yeah, she got the, you know, whatever we're at most amount of views, which is pretty cool. Next up after that is Bitlooney. And I believe that was, yeah, 73. That's either Bitlooney's second or third episode. Yeah, for, I'm not sure which, which one, but at, at least second, uh, Bitlooney. Really nice, uh, really nice guy. I, I kind of, we don't speak that often, but I would, I would consider him a friend. Like if I needed help, I would very easily be able to reach out to to Bitlooney. And, you know, I, even though we don't talk a lot, I feel like we're on the same sort of plane. Like, obviously, he's on some sort of higher, you know, more intelligent and way more handsome plane. But, but I, I feel like we could, uh, you know, pick up a voice call and just be immediate uh, immediate friends so really like really like bit looney um i was kind of surprised because usually he goes by bit looney but on the first uh podcast he he said his full name which was you know caught me by surprise but yeah really cool guy i wish i could understand half the stuff he did i have no idea what he's coding most of the time he has massive live streams you know eight hour long live streams which you guys should go take a look at um it used to be uh at bitlooney's trash but now i think it's just uh bitlooney live really good stuff um you know way over my head and it's pretty crazy that he has a ton of subscribers considering that the stuff that he does is pretty advanced like i know he was very you know, very popular for his uh, LED wall. Let me see how many. Yeah, 250,000 subscribers. And I think EEV blog is somewhere at oh, st still not a million. Crazy. I mean, Dave must have been at 900,000 for like the last five years. Um, but yeah, he has a quarter of a bit. Looney has a quarter million subscribers, which is a lot, especially in our you know, vertical. Uh, next is uh, Julian Eilert, number nine, episode number 94. Um, I believe I told my very close friends, uh, I said a joke when, when he agreed to be on the podcast. Very hard to find, by the way. Uh, Julian does not have an email. Let me just, before I put my um, foot in my mouth, uh, Julian said that he has his email in his about section on YouTube, but I couldn't find it. I'm just going to check. No, he does not. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, he doesn't have his email in his about section. Really hard to get a hold of him. He used to do live streams. He used to, to uh, chat in there sometimes. Um, but I think when he agreed, when I released the podcast, I was telling my my insider baseball friends, you know, my YouTuber friends, that it's almost like I'm collecting all the electronics YouTubers, like like uh, Thanos did the uh, Infinity Stones, because there are a few uh, big electronics YouTubers left, um, but they're not very easy to get a hold of, and um, one already very politely declined with no offense taken and he ha he didn't have to give me a reason but he did so uh that infinity stone is not getting collected um but yeah there basically 
I've got pretty much all the who's who of the the big electronics YouTubers, just missing, you know, a couple of the really big ones and, and if and a few smaller ones. And I'm accepting smaller ones every day. If you haven't been on the podcast, by the way, and you want to be, you know, post episode 100, then reach out. The easiest thing for you to do is to reach out to me because I will always get your email. Now, I may not email you back depending on my state of mind, but uh, I will eventually get back to you. So there's that. Now, just a quick interruption before we move on to thank our sponsor, PCBWay. Now, this is not part of the sponsor spot, so maybe listen to this part first and then do what you need to do. But uh, I want to personally thank PCBWay for being um, the largest sponsor, the most constant sponsor on the YouTube channel. The fact that PCBWay uh, believes in the channel's mission and what we do here and uh, supports me to be able to buy cool stuff to make cool projects, I'm really thankful for. Um, And in fact, a lot of the time, the stuff that I am buying is, you know, groceries and uh, paying for mortgage and all that sort of stuff. So I want to thank PCB Way from the bottom of my heart. If you guys have PCB projects or uh, even breadboard projects that you want to put onto a PCB, please consider PCB Way. You can check the link in the description. Essentially, you get 10 boards for five US dollars plus shipping and handling. Uh, last I checked, the uh, cheap shipping option is actually very affordable so you end up somewhere around the you know 11 to 15 US dollars for 10 boards in your hands uh, it's it's a really good deal on top of that if you're not interested in PCBs they also do CNC machining they do SLS printing they do FDM 3d printing um, they do sheet metal bending all sorts of stuff there is something for everyone at PCBWay, so check out PCBWay.com through the link in the description. That really helps support the channel, and uh, thank you so much for listening to my spiel. Back to the show. All right, so where have I been recently? Well, the answer is I've been right here, but I've been suffering from uh, burnout. I've been uh, sort of really burnt out of the uh, YouTube stuff lately so I've been sort of on a unofficial unplanned three-week hiatus Uh, I have been working my uh, two other jobs you know at at the same time so it's not like I haven't been doing anything but yeah essentially uh, oh and I've been working on the house and doing stuff like that a whole bunch of unexpected things always crop up uh, when I have stuff to do so Yeah, I got a a lot of stuff done and I think I'm going to try to uh, forcibly end the uh, hiatus. Uh, I'm going to, you know, go back to doing regular live streams and see if I can slowly record uh, some new videos for you guys. There are a lot of things that I am interested in. So it's not like I lost interest. It's just it's very hard to to be creative when you don't feel creative. Now, this has also come with a second little problem. When I don't have time or the will to make videos, I go shopping and I have not really been on AliExpress. In fact, I think now is the first time that all of my AliExpress packages are in. Everything is here and I don't have anything else I am expecting. So, as a lot of you that have followed the channel for a long time have known, um, I shoot my videos on a Nikon D3300. Uh, it's a digital, you know, single lens ref- reflex DSLR camera. Uh, I'm just trying to get the release date for you. Uh, it was released in January 2014. It is now a 10 year old camera. I had bought it used uh, years ago for very little money. Uh, In fact, now that I think about it, the deal was a bit sketchy. The battery was dead and you didn't even have a charger. But anyways, the the point is 
I've been looking for a camera upgrade forever. A uh, long time ago, I used to be into photography. That would be like 10 years ago plus at this point. And I've always been buying lenses, you know, from, from that point before YouTube in the, in the idea that instead of a small sensor camera, I would eventually get a pro big sensor camera. The issue with that is they are very expensive. So, uh, I saw on Amazon, there was a Nikon D780, uh, sorry, let me get this right. Yeah, 780. Yeah, D780 Nikon professional camera with uh, the full frame zoom lens, you know, because you need a, I, I shoot overhead, so I need, you know, something that can be go up close or stay far away and something with good autofocus. So that fit the bill. Only problem is it was on sale on Amazon for over three thousand uh, dollars, or just under three thousand dollars. Let me let me confirm that for you. Um, it was. Oh, there we go. Okay, it, the original price is uh, thirty seven hundred dollars, three thousand seven hundred dollars with the kit lens with with the zoom lens, but it's on sale for uh, two thousand nine hundred dollars, and. That's just way too much money. Uh, it, I mean, it doesn't make sense. But the reason I want it is because it can shoot 4K video. My current setup cannot. Uh, so I can crop more effectively. And uh, also 60 frames per second because I love 60 frames per second video. So, and it's full frame. has a big, big uh, sensor on it. So, you know, with the available lighting I have. It's overall a really good camera. However, it's way too much money. I found one, though, on eBay on Can uh, in Canada, which is very important because or else you pay uh, taxes when it crosses the border. Uh, so I found one, a used one, and I put an offer. I put an offer for $1,950. And it went through. They accepted the offer. Now, this thing is basically new. has 11,000 shutter clicks. So um, it, it, on, you know, it only took 11,000 photos. It's in Canada. So you know, it won't get jostled too, too much. Uh, it comes with all the original box accessories and stuff like that. It's a big purchase. But I feel like that is going to be my forever camera as long as it doesn't break. Uh, so, yeah, I just spent $2,000 on a camera and lens for my YouTube channel when I haven't filmed a YouTube video in a month. So that being said, I need to get back to making YouTube videos I, and I will be making YouTube videos, but I feel like this camera has been something I've been looking forward to for a very long time. And perhaps in my sort of time off, I felt like this would motivate me to make videos. Um, but now I just feel, you know, a lot of pressure to make videos. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. But I just wanted to share with you that, you know, I feel like now I've got a, you know, some big boy equipment. I'm not using, you know, a, a crappy camera from 10 years ago and shooting my thumbnails on a crappy camera from like 12 years ago uh, that uh, hopefully you're going to see a change in the quality of videos. I mean, I've been meaning to do this for a long time. But I want to have a little corner of my workshop where I can shoot B-roll. That's why I've been working on a turntable, which I need to get back to. So basically, the, the plan going forward is to uh, do the live streams, you know, on the second channel, SC Made a Stream. And that's going to be for shop infrastructure stuff. I have to upgrade some lights, which I have all the parts for here. I need to finish the turntable. That's another thing. I have to do a whole bunch of things. And I'm going to do that on the live stream channel and hopefully uh, work on stuff 
to make the uh, YouTube channel a better channel overall. Try to make the videos higher quality, not just in visual quality, but I want to have my microscopes. I've got a couple of microscopes here. I want to have one always plugged in, ready to go, so I can, you know, take close-ups of stuff. Try to get a little bit more B-roll, a little bit more angles, view a little bit better. Maybe have a second, uh, like a webcam, uh, ready to take B-roll from a different angle. I've even seen people like Pile of Stuff who famously says they just set up their camera and, you know, he just records what happens to be in front of them. But he he is also doing, you know, second angles and stuff like that. I think all this stuff is going to reinvigorate my my want for making projects. And I hope you guys will will still be around to to watch the new videos as they come out. Because I do know that not releasing videos for quite a long time uh, affects the the almighty algorithm, um, at least initially, and then you know over time it could find an audience. So that's the plan. So expect a lot of infrastructure projects. Um, I do have a Patreon, but if you want to join the Patreon, there are no benefits at the moment. There is a little bit of early access when I can. Typically, all my videos get at least a day early access, but don't uh, don't hold me to that. Uh, essentially, my Patreons have had a month of essentially nothing. Uh, so, sorry, Patreons, except, you know, podcasts release a little bit earlier. Um, but I've also seen a lot of YouTubers make interesting projects, and I think a fun way for me to get back into video making is to build their projects. For example, I think it was with Pile of Stuff, I was talking about Professor Boots, which is a YouTuber who makes uh, scaled down remote control, you know, excavators and and, uh, dump trucks and stuff like that. And I think the cool part about that kind of stuff is he doesn't release publicly the you know the electronics portion of it you have to pay him to get that well i don't think it's that complicated and i've taken it as sort of a challenge to do tutorials on how to use the motors he's using how to use the motor drivers he's using and in that case people can put it together themselves i'm actually going to chat with professor boots i'll send him an email because i would love to publish my own boards for his excavator and like legally it doesn't matter i i'm allowed to do that i can make my own design and put it out for free but ethically it doesn't sound ethical so i want to reach out to him and see at what point i have to stop in order to um remain ethical because i don't want to take away his i don't want to take away his income unless he's he's cool with it you know so Stuff like that. I, I think that's the, the foray back into it is going to be infrastructure uh, projects and working on, you know, other YouTubers, cool projects that, that they've put out and um, have some fun here. I especially love the idea of uh, desktop toys because, you know, then I can play with them while I'm listening back to the podcast, um, editing, stuff like that. And I've always wanted to build my own uh, RC, you know, transmitter. So that might be in the works as well, especially now that, um, the coding end of it becomes a lot more simple with tools like chat GPT, because yeah, I could reach out to a whole bunch of people in my Rolodex to help me with code. But the issue is that doesn't teach me anything. Um, with chat GPT, I can spend hours asking it what each line of code does and why it's needed and and stuff like that so I can actually internalize it. So that is going to be the plan moving forward. And um, yeah, before we go, I just want to take uh, this other opportunity uh, to thank everyone. So if you're a viewer of the YouTube channel itself, thank you so much. Um, 
seeing the the view numbers be very low is something that is not good for the self-esteem of a YouTuber. So those of you who do watch my videos, uh, that is, you know, really appreciated. You guys are doing, you know, God's work if if you believe in such a thing. Uh, the people who listen to the podcasts, I love you folks too. I mean, it takes a special breed of someone to sit through a whole hour-ish, ish, this is probably going to be around the 50-minute mark, but whole hour-ish of content, um, and especially listening all the way to the end. So you guys are doing great. I did ask you guys a while ago to rate the podcast, and some of you did. My podcast is rated five stars on, uh, what is this, Spotify. I don't know if it, well, on iTunes either, but I, I think Google Podcasts is now dead. So iTunes, let's check what it is on iTunes, four stars. So not bad, four stars. I mean, I wouldn't consider myself a four star. Um, so it looks like there was a three star and a five star review. So pretty cool. And so, um, yeah, those of you who comment, I love uh, comments. A lot of you, I, I don't, you know, answer because uh, you're asking questions I have no idea the answer to, but uh, usually the podcast comments are the better ones. And um, yeah, if you want to be on the Simple Electronics podcast, as long as you have, uh, you know, something to share, something interesting, which you probably do, just reach out. Um, I can easily be found through my YouTube channel or my website, um, simplelectronics.ca. So make sure you reach out. And here's to, here's hoping, another 100 episodes. Thanks for listening, everyone. Catch you on the next one.